Hello, my name is Tatum Simonson from the Department of Medicine, Division of Physiology at the University of California, San Diego. I am pleased to introduce the reports discussed in our symposium titled Oxygen Transport Adaptations to Exercise in Native Highland Populations, organized by Dr. Peter Wagner and myself for the Physiology Conference held in London in July 2014. These reports provide an overview of recent progress made in connecting adaptive genetic variants in high altitude populations to important physiological traits, including exercise capacity. Changes at each step of the oxygen transport pathway composed of ventilation, circulation, and diffusion of oxygen across lung and muscle barriers have probably contributed to the survival of highland inhabitants challenged by the unavoidable stress of hypoxia over many generations. This symposium emphasizes genomic developments in a physiological context and challenges traditional thinking about oxygen transport at altitude, as exercise capacity is inversely related to hemoglobin concentration in Tibetan Highlanders. In the first presentation, Dr. Robbins explains how hypoxia exposure generally results in pulmonary vasoconstriction and pulmonary hypertension in humans, which are likely the result of upregulation of the hypoxia-inducible factor, or HIF, pathway. This modulates the expression of hundreds of genes involved in vascularization, urethropoiesis, metabolism, and developmental processes. Pulmonary vascular responses to hypoxia are, however, suppressed in Tibetans resident at sea level, who also exhibit lower hemoglobin concentration compared to sea level Han Chinese. In line with these findings, select HIF target genes show decreased expression in peripheral blood lymphocytes collected from sea level Tibetans. These unique characteristics appear to reflect Tibetan adaptations to hypoxia. Considering its influence on human pulmonary circulation, however, iron availability may also contribute to the attenuated pulmonary hypertension observed among Tibetans. Such relationships and associations with the adaptive genetic factors and the tissue-specific gene expression remain active areas of hypoxia research. Mr. Stembridge next offered perspectives from a cardiac standpoint providing specific insight into left ventricular LV mechanics, including key components of systolic contraction and diastolic recoil, which are important in augmenting cardiac function during exercise. Both lowlanders and highland Sherpa exhibit decreased LV volumes at altitude. However, lowlanders at altitude examined in resting conditions exhibit higher baseline LV systolic twist compared to Sherpa also at altitude. This remodeling in lowlanders, but not Sherpa, may restrict mechanical reserve during exercise. Sherpa, however, exhibited reduced diastolic untwist and therefore decreased filling, although their reduction in systolic twists may serve to restore functional reserve. This reserve, comparable to that typically observed in lowlanders at sea level, could work to facilitate higher stroke volumes during exercise. These studies highlight important differences in cardiac adaptation to high altitude in lowland and Sherpa populations. The contribution of genetic and or developmental factors to high stroke volume during exercise in Sherpa, and whether there are comparable cardiac mechanics and adaptive changes in Andeans and Ethiopian Thailand groups remains to be determined. As explained by our next presenter, Dr. McLean, Several genes contained within genomic regions exhibiting signals of adaptation in Tibetan populations are involved in metabolic processes. Gain of function variants in the protein coding region of the Eglin 1 gene, an oxygen sensor in the HIF pathway, are found at high frequency in Tibetans, but not other populations. This gain of function, so decreased HIF activity, suggests that other adaptive changes might be involved in meeting energy demands in the context of reduced fuel oxidation in a chronically hypoxic state. Serum metabolites collected from Tibetans resident at 4,200 meters in a non-fasted state are associated with adaptive genetic signatures at two gene regions. The variants tagging the putatively adaptive EPAS1 haplotype, which is part of the HIF2 transcription factor, are associated with greater lactate, and the haplotype exhibiting an adaptive signal at PPAR alpha, a peroxisome proliferator activator receptor gene, is associated with elevated free fatty acids. These findings suggest increased anaerobic metabolism and decreased oxidation of fat, respectively. Complex metabolic reprogramming in Highlanders might contribute to their relatively low prevalence of diabetes, although inflexibility to metabolize various substrates could prove problematic at low altitude and or upon intake of a non-traditional diet.
The presentation by Dr. Wagner focused on the recent finding that Tibetans with lower hemoglobin concentration exhibit greater exercise capacity. Examination of each step of the oxygen transport cascade in both Tibetan and Han Chinese males at 4,200 meters has revealed negative associations between hemoglobin concentration and cardiac output and muscle diffusion conductance in Tibetans. These two components explain most of the variation in Tibetan exercise capacity. During exercise, supplemental oxygen increased Tibetan and Han Chinese work rate less than amounts previously reported in Caucasian lowlanders at altitude. How lower hemoglobin concentration in Tibetans relates mechanistically to cardiac and skeletal muscle structure and or function and lower arterial PCO2 and whether these changes are directly or indirectly related to hemoglobin concentration to each other and to genetic adaptations remains to be determined. To wrap up this session, I next discussed how human populations have lived at high altitude for hundreds of generations. The most commonly reported selection candidate genes in Tibetans are those involved in the HIF pathway, and putatively adaptive copies of EPES1, Eglin1, and PPAR alpha are associated with relatively lower hemoglobin concentration. While the specific genetic targets of adaptation and associated functions are largely unknown, functional variants in the first exon of the oxygen sensor Eglin1, which encodes PHD2, have been identified. Interestingly, some adaptive signals identified in Tibetans have also been reported as adaptive candidates in other highland populations. Whether the genetic variants are the same in these groups and how the collection of adaptive signals relate to tissue-specific, epigenetic, and developmental effects, and, as described in the symposium, components of oxygen transport beyond hemoglobin concentration remain active areas of research. The chronological order of adaptive events will provide greater insight into this complex, highly coordinated process. We hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to our symposium reports on oxygen transport in Tibetans. Thank you.